Hello everyone, welcome to The Contemplating Christian. Today we're going to be looking at somebody, a theologian, that uh, not many people know about, but we think uh, people should know much more about. A very gifted writer, pastor, and theologian named Stephen Charnock. And so we're going to be working through his book, The Existence and Attributes of God. And in the beginning of that, they have a little uh, short biography of the man talking about his life and his character. And so we're going to be working through that a little bit today. So Stephen Charnock was an influential Puritan theologian in the late 17th century, and he would represent what would later be known as Protestant Reformed scholasticism. This is just a period of time where in the Reformed tradition, they are figuring out all of their theology. So they're writing a bunch of systematic theologies. They are really digging deep in scripture and trying to figure out what the Reformed tradition really believes about everything and applying that to every aspect of life. And he lived and ministered in a very uh, tumultuous time in English history, which makes him both a fascinating figure to study um, as it hindered his ministry a lot. He had like large portions of time where he wasn't able to minister at all uh, because of legal reasons. So it's a very interesting story to his life with a little bit that we know of. And so we're going to be looking at that. And of course, though he wrote a lot, his most memorable work is the massive two volume uh, work that we're going to be studying, The Existence and Attributes of God. This huge work in classical Puritan fashion combines both sharp logic and also uh, warm devotional literature as well. So it's going to challenge both your mind and your heart, which is awesome. And so we're just going to give a brief sketch of his life. He was born in 1628 in London, and at a young age, he became a student in Emmanuel College at Cambridge at a very young age. So people were very smart back then and got into college very early. And it was there in college that the Spirit of God brought about his conversion. And so uh, to quote the book, it says, the Spirit of God brought about, quote, that essential change of heart that fit him for being eminently useful to thousands of his fellow creatures. That is an awesome way to describe a conversion. The Spirit of God was working upon him. Um, and oftentimes today we, we speak about our conversion in terms of us being the the doer or the actor in our conversion. Uh, but in here it says the spirit of God brought about that change in his heart. Shortly thereafter, Charnock entered into ministry. So he entered into uh, pastoral ministry. And after a short stint of pastoring in Southwark, which is a, a place in, in the UK, he went to Oxford in 1649. And there he received a master of arts. And due to his widely recognized uh, gifts, he was given the title of senior proctor by his peers in 1652. So he was very uh, well-established, well-recognized academic then at this time. After his proctorship, he went to Ireland and was with the family of Henry Cromwell. And if you guys know a little bit about history there and English history, if you know Oliver Cromwell, he was the Lord Protector of England at this time. <clears throat> uh, his son was named Henry Cromwell, or one of his sons. And this is who Charnock was actually serving and a chaplain for. It seems that Charnock was, was there to be a kind of a personal pastoral chaplain uh, type figure to the family of the governor of Ireland, who was Henry Cromwell. And there in Dublin, he preached regularly and developed his ministry skills. Uh, he was highly esteemed in Dublin for his great learning, preaching, and character. And the restoration then of King Charles II halted Charnock's ministry. So this is when the, mon the monarchy got restored to uh, Great Britain, and uh, the reestablishment of the British monarchy took out many of the uh, Protestant, particularly Puritan, ministers of the day, and that included Stephen Charnock. For the next 15 years, he lived in London, pursuing his studies and uh, occasionally ministering to people in secret, which is just fascinating that he's basically having to um, minister under uh, secrecy because he's not allowed to actually have any official sort of pastorate at the time uh, because he was part of the dissenting uh, Puritan groups who were protesting against the Church of England at the time. So uh, he's pastoring in London, kind of in secret, and he was an excellent student. He developed uh, more of his studies, more of his theology. He wrote more and uh, devoted enormous amounts of time to his books and his studies. And that came to a tragic end because in 1666 in London, there was a great fire and all of his books, his entire library, got destroyed at this time. And so for somebody who uh, loves their books, this is a very, very sad day for, uh, for Stephen Charnock because he, all of his books got destroyed. 
1675, when government regulations uh, finally relaxed, he took a call from a congregation in Crosby Square, which was in uh, London, to co-pastor with uh, Reverend Thomas Watson, who was another um, eminent uh, Puritan theologian and minister who has written a lot of books as well that you could go and read from the Puritan paperback series, has a lot of his works. And Charnock ministered there at Crosby Hall for five years until his death on July 27th, 1680, at the age of 53. So pretty early time to die, uh, but he made a lot of use of the time that God gave him. And by all accounts, Charnock seemed to be a man uh, that truly loved God with all his mind and truly loved uh, his people, truly loved the people that he was shepherding. And his writings are both logical and imaginative, both engaging of the heart and the mind. And he's remembered as a great intellect, a good shepherd, and a holy man of God. And so that is why we're excited to both study the man, Stephen Charnock, and of course his works, uh, The Existence and Attributes of God. Thank you. God bless.